Hey, hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. We gotta go chase some kids into the woods, but first, let's chat with this kid. <laughs> uh, that's really it? Oh, well, okay. Let's move on into the woods then. <laughs> so, I'm gonna chat with the other kids along the way. This is, this is kind of odd, actually, or at least I've always found this to be odd. Just watch this. Like, she says right here that, that she can't keep up with them. But look how short this walk is. Here's the next kid. <laughs> it's it's like they just gave up or something like that. Maybe they, they don't have, like, high endurance or something like that. That could very well be. Anyway, we're crossing the bridge into new territory. And there's going to be a little transition to the Farron Woods now. Ah, oh, such beauty. Uh, you've seen at the end over there that there is a fence. Grab some grass. Kalanope to you! Yeah, that's how that grass works when Anope is at a distance. She'll come through one of the entrances to the area. It happens during a little cutscene here. And simply hop the fence. Ah, such beauty. Oh, so gorgeous, with the addition of bloom. <laughs> anyway, go through this cave with her, and you won't be able to go through the next cave, however. But actually, could I actually try going? Yeah, she won't go go past that spot. Okay. <laughs> so what you want to do first, actually, is go through here and talk to this guy. You need this for a little bit later on in the area. So I might as well just grab this now. And he's apparently so still, he's like a statue, and birds don't mind sitting on him. No, that's, that's not just true. He's probably just very friendly with the birds, and possibly the bees. So this guy gives you a free lantern! But why would he do such a thing? It always seems to come at a price, right? Well, sort of. He sells lantern oil. So he gives away free lanterns so people will buy his oil. <laughs> you know, to power up his lan- I mean, to power up the lanterns he gives people. So, you probably know how to equip items by now. If you don't, well, you weren't paying much attention, have you? <laughs> so, uh, equip the lantern, press B to whip it out, and then just set the fire underneath it. Uh, I don't think that... I mean, you can light these things around here, these torches around here as well, but I don't think you get anything for doing so. I'll put that away to save uh, lantern oil. Do you notice that there's a little gauge underneath the lantern there? That uh, gauge goes down gradually as the lantern is lit. That So the oil is obviously limited, and that's where he gets his sales from. Can I go inside? Yeah, I can go inside his house. I'll check out his house. See what is up. And oh my, he needs a broom, or a merry maid, or something like that. <laughs> uh, there really isn't much to see in here, is there? No, I, I don't think you can do anything in here. So let's get out of here, into the great open world, and go through that cave that Anope stopped and was frightened to go into earlier. So whip out your sword. This is a new enemy known as a Deku Baba. Just swing the sword at it. It dies pretty quickly. <laughs> Sometimes they drop nuts. Uh, they're known as Deku Nuts. And you can throw them to get stuff inside them like by breaking them. And in this case, it is seeds for my slingshot. Very nice. Ooh, spooky. The kids have definitely been through here. And it looks to be a dangerous route. You can't pick up that stick, by the way, so I'll just leave it behind. It is dark. You can light things, but surprisingly not burn gra burn any grass. <laughs> uh, these are keys. Just Z-target them and swing your sword wildly, and they should die pretty quickly. <laughs> they're a rather easy enemy, but when they're in groups, they can be pretty troublesome. You'll notice that when you whip out your sword while the lantern is equipped, your lantern will stay lit and it'll be attached to the side of your clothes so that it'll uh, still burn and give you light along the way. See this? See this spider web? You can't get through this no matter... Uh, 
and my Wii Remote decided to run out of batteries. Hold on a second, please! <laughs> There we go! Now, as I was saying, you can't get through this web with just your sword, but you can burn it with the lantern. That's why you need the lantern. I should, see that. I should say that's why you need to get it from that guy. That is a rat. They die very easy as well, just the target attack them. Um, these things burn as well. Uh, I, mean, I mean, these webs burn as well. I don't think they burn up to the pot on certain circumstances, but that's okay because you can just do this instead and wow, this Wii Remote speaker is much louder than the other one. And uh, I should not attempt to hit a moving pot. <laughs> I, I thought it told me what a blue rupee was before, that's kind of weird. I, probably because I turned off the game, it just, it just decides to remind me what a blue rupee is, I guess. <laughs> One funny story about me uh, with the game here is that I I'm recording this on a different day than the other parts. Uh, what I did was between parts I was like, oh, I gotta do something, so I decided to put the game on pause and I completely forgot about the game. And what happened was I left the game running for like 4 hours and 30 minutes and that saved on my save file and I got back here so there's like 4 so there's 4 hours and 30 minutes of extra time on my save slot that is absolutely no gameplay whatsoever. It doesn't mean anything of course, it's just something funny that I thought I would make note of. Anyway, that's it for this cave. Let's get out of here and go into the woods themselves. Now you're going to notice two marks on your map. See that? Right there, and right there, those red dots. I should put away my lantern to save oil. Well, the first one you want to go to is this one over here. Although, maybe I should show you what I'm aiming for. I should say, I, the reason why I want to go to that other one on the left first. It's not too far from here, so I'll just take a run to it. See that gate? There's a lock on that gate, and we need to find a key for it. And there's uh, new enemies here. I, I believe they're called Book Goblins. Just Z target, swing your sword like crazy. You don't have a shield or anything. So, uh, your best defense is a good offense. Oh, and now that I'm actually in some sort of danger, I can explain how my life works at the upper left corner there. Uh, your hearts are divided in quarters, and depending on how much damage you take, will lower that much. Whoa! Where'd you come from? <laughs> we'll lower that much uh, health on your health gauge. It depends on the enemy, of course. It's really, really simple, and it hasn't changed throughout Zelda games. You can find hearts inside grass and death nuts and other stuff like that. Let's see if I can get a heart drop somewhere just to show you. Well, maybe oh, surprise attack! I don't think so. Actually, I don't. I don't even think it knew that I was there. <laughs> um. I should also mention that you should be aiming to get a hundred rupees for something. Just saying that you should have a goal. I don't want to spoil what it is, but it's a pretty nice prize, and I'd like to get get it before I leave the woods, if at all possible. But if not, I can always get it later on in the game. Anyway, now that I'm at the left red dots path, I can go inside and battle some more enemies, because that's always fun. Eh, eh, eh. Bludgeon enemies with a wooden sword that's very dull. Oh, there's a heart drop. Hearts recover one full heart, even though that you can lose a quarter or half a heart at a time. And even more than that, obviously. Light those two lanterns. Well, light those two torches. And that will appear. What is inside this, and why is it so important? Well, it's for 100%ing the game. This is a piece of hearts. As it says, collect five pieces to form a new heart container. Uh, you see three hearts up there? If I got five pieces, it would increase it to four, as an example. Oh, I should put, put it away again, don't want to waste oil. But inside this chest is the thing that I'm looking for. Oh, and I believe there are 45 heart pieces in the world, so... Uh, in order to 100% this game, I will be collecting every single one of them. It's gonna be awesome. Almost always, uh, heart pieces are guarded by like either an obstacle course or side quest or something like that. So it'll always be rather interesting getting a heart piece, and it's very much worth doing the tasks to get them because it's just interesting to do so. And... Uh, I'm being attacked on all sides now. Even though they're not doing very much. <laughs> What's inside this? Nuts. Okie dokie. I was hoping for more rupees for stuff later, but whatever. 
Peace, peace die in one hit. Very, very easy enemy. <laughs> they usually die in one hit in Zelda games anyway, I suppose. So it makes sense. Yeah. Two at once. Sometimes it's better to divide and conquer depending on the situation. But in that case, because they're so close together, you can just swing at both of them at once. What does this say? Mm, I've got enough lantern oil. So now I can use the key. Boop. And attack this guy. Just because I can. <laughs> Any drops? Uh, as a heart, I suppose. I'm looking more for pocket change, though. I'm halfway to the goal of 100 that I'm aiming for. Well, over halfway. So I, I can't really complain here. Alright. You guys, I don't have to deal with you, but I'm gonna deal with you anyway, just because it's sort of fun. <laughs> uh, whenever you hear that really loud sound or whatever, you know that you killed the enemy. In case you didn't realize that by now from all the com combat I've been having here. So that's a good way to um, focus like your rhythm or something like that, so to speak, so that you don't keep attacking an enemy that is already dead. Are you... I can't... Oh. I was gonna talk to you in just a second, but I guess... I guess I'll talk to you now, or very shortly. You, you're seriously telling me I cannot get... Come on, really? <laughs> Why would the drop go up there of all places? Alright, so... I'm gonna empty all my bottle here just by drinking the bee larva. Mmm, that's... delicious. Mm. <laughs> so over here... is stuff that you can buy. Over here is lantern oil, which you can use to refill your lantern, of course. Or refill your hearts with a red potion just by di dipping your bottle into it. You pay via the honor system by dropping rupees into the boxes. You've seen there was prices on there. But there's something a little bit funnier. If you decide to leave, he will attack you. Run, 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 run. Actually, I thought he was supposed to attack me by now. Maybe if I go back, he's going to try to attack me. Will you... Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> eh. Yeah, it's it's a lot harder to steal stuff if you steal stuff without paying the second time you attempt to leave without paying. You get the idea. <laughs> uh, I don't really think you have to pay him for anything at any point in the game, actually. It's just something funny to show off there, though. You know, but you know, by not paying. Though, if you're an honorable guy, I'm not because I'm naughty like that. You should probably drop a few rupees into the box. Whoa! Trapped with the monkey. We must go save them. We pulled your sword ahead of time, by the way, in case it's put away. And this is what I mean by divide and conquer, since there's two of them at two different spots, you're better off just going after one on one side first than the other so that you don't like alert them both at the same time and then you have to use a spin attack to get them off you. Speaking of the spin attack, that is by far the easiest way to open this cage. <laughs> Voila! One spin attack, it opens right up. If not, just go around to the other side and break the other bars. Safe. I don't know about getting eaten, but you would probably be stuck there for a while. Uh, how much is keeping this information a secret worth to you? Nah, I wouldn't blackmail the kid, though I do want a hundred rupees. <laughs> hey, yup. Hey, yup. Hmm, nope. E yup. <laughs> I could probably do that the entire video, just by... I, I mean, in the entire walkthrough, just through dialogue. It just works. <laughs> that is brilliant writing on the MLP team's part, I have to say, say with Big Mac. And the next day, or at least I think it is. More goat herding! <laughs> Gotta love it! I don't know why Link hasn't started yet, he's just kind of staring at the sky there, he's kind of absent minded like that, I suppose. I know the feeling, though. I do know the feeling. 
so let's get a no pay over here. First, let's finish off our chores. I actually find the second incarnation of the goat herding minigame easier than the first in some ways. I don't know why, they just seem to behave better. <laughs> All right, let's get it started. There's 20 goats though, so there's two times as many goats as the first time. Still not much trouble to get them in there though. I'm not really gonna be going for uh, a world record time here. I'm just going to be gently coaxing them in there. Maybe I should be doing them in certain sections. Things a little easier on myself perhaps. Voila, uh, let's get these rascals down there. Perhaps I should be using a country accent or something like that, as, as it would be more fitting for this sort of mini game. I don't know. <laughs> I reckon I'll be getting all the goats into that barn by sundown. Actually, it's like morning right now. <laughs> At least by the way the transition of time looked. What? What? You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to go. Come on, turn, turn. Good, good. And come on, come on, all of you, to the barn, not the moon, the barn, good, one more to go, yeah, voila, oh boy, but y'all can't heard, that was 151 faster than usual, I didn't know the, uh, that there was a record that existed. <laughs> Well, that's about wraps her up for today, so how about y'all head over to the mayor's place? So yeah, that feels a lot better, doesn't it? And then when you add that country accent to the situation. And I love this upcoming cutscene. You'll see what I mean. Or at least I hope you will. <laughs> He's like, oh. Hey, yup. <laughs> I just had to. <laughs> awesome. I'm all ready to go then. Yeah, that would be, it would be quite Okay, I should really stop with the references now. <laughs> but there's so much fun, I like references. What? This was even outside of my knowledge. Dun dun dun. Okay, I'll really stop now. <laughs> Now watch this. Watch this. Clearly they are on each other's sides. <laughs> I love that. She scolds everyone and we're just like, eh, well, whatever. It doesn't really matter all that much. It's, I mean, sure, it's bad that she got hurt, but we know she'll recover. <laughs> well, looks like my horse got stolen from me again. Let's go get her back. And what do you have to say? Yeah, I suppose. Uh, what? This again? Seriously? Why? <laughs> well, fine. I'll do this just for the fun of it. Why not? Yeah. I guess every time you talk to the mayor, it triggers a goat to run loose. Maybe the his voice is what causes the goats to be skittish. <laughs> Alright, let's go back over to the spring that we've seen on our path to the left from our house. And that's where, where we will find Anope. Uh, let's see what the kids have to say about this. Yeah, I will be. Uh, 
Are they that tough that they won't let me through? I mean, that I won't be able to get past them or something like that? Sure, you can follow me, but I'm gonna talk to the other ones first. Hey, how's it going? E no, no. <laughs> And a little cutscene happens here. It was? That was kind of dangerous, actually. <laughs> Tattletail. <laughs> uh, that seems kind of dangerous for a kid to have, if you ask me, so... No! I'm going through here. Dang it! I have to give him the sword. Yeah, I know I have to give him the sword. But I just want to show you what they say if you say no to them. There's a bunch of different multiple uh, dialogue parts like this in the game. Depending on your answers. Woo! Alright, you work on that. I'll get my horse back. You're welcome. Well, it is nice to defend yourself against those critters, I suppose. Sure, if I can, you know, keep keep my horse around. It seems seems, seems like people around these parts have trouble um, having a handle on their livestock. Like it just seems to keep either running away from them or stolen or something. <laughs> anyway, now we're gonna go down the path to the spring very shortly. I wonder if I could... Um, I mean, I know I could, but I wonder if the dialogue would change. Like, there's a path over here that I know about already, but I wonder if the dialogue would change if I went through there without talking to these two first. Chat! Because this is the, the point in the game that he'll tell you to uh, go through that pathway so I can meet up with them. I like doing those sequence break things at times, but at the same time, I don't want to ruin the um, the main dialogue most people would see, so to speak. I hope you get what I mean here. <laughs> and that's a tunnel he's describing there. Do you guys have anything else to say for yourselves? Hmm... I guess you pretty much say the same thing. Well, okay. You talk to her, distract her, I'll take the side route in. And you can crawl through this hole just like you would... You can crawl through this hole just like you would in Wind Waker. Oh, you can also go into first person mode by uh, pressing the C button. And when you reach a junction, just press the direction you want to go to turn in that direction. That is the controls for crawling. Very simple, very intuitive. You know, it's sort of funny. I would think that he could have just told her while I was there. And then she would just open the gate and I wouldn't have to crawl through that hole. But no, no, I gotta crawl through the hole in order to start this cutscene. Finally realized that, huh? Well, stop stealing my horse, dang it! Oh, I knew she'd be okay. Even the mayor knew that. <laughs> sure, I don't know what, though. No problem!
Ha <laughs> ha!